Hi all, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's episode, we'll be focusing on global secure access within the Microsoft Entra Admin Console, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. Microsoft announced global secure access, which encompasses both Microsoft Internet Access and Microsoft Private Access uh, within the last couple of weeks. Currently in public preview and private preview, of which we'll be going through some of the functionality within global secure access in itself. The way people have worked has changed. Instead of working in traditional offices, people now work from nearly everywhere. We got remote working. This could be with remote applications, data uh, from on-premise to cloud, um, any type of identities, and a cloud-delivered network perimeter. This is all moving to the new and improved security service edge. Microsoft Entra Internet Access and Microsoft Entra, Entra Private Access compromise the uh, Microsoft Security Service Edge solution, which Microsoft have just announced. Global Secure Access um, service itself is currently in preview and it's a unifying term for both Microsoft Intra Internet Access and Microsoft Intra Private Access. Microsoft Global Secure Access is a unified service. It's built into the Microsoft Intra Admin Console. And with that, it's there to secure not just your identities, not just your endpoints, but also your remote networks. And it also coincides with the zero trust principles, which are verify, use least privilege, and assume, assume breach, which was previously created by the Foresters Group. It's also associated with Defend for Cloud Apps through the Cloud Access Security Broker. And you can also implement some of the policies um, utilizing the likes of conditional access with the relevant licensing. Global secure access through the likes of Microsoft in Internet Access and Microsoft Private Access is here to prevent your stolen token, prevent stolen tokens, um, implement universal tenant restrictions, i.e. for external sharing and external access, providing you a set of enriched logs for your visibility in a single pane of glass, as well as uh, acquiring logs for network traffic and having visibility of your network traffic. Let's have a, a dive into the Entra Admin Console and let's have a look at some of the, the services um, what we can implement within the uh, console itself. First things first, you need to access entra.microsoft.com. Once you're in entra.microsoft.com, the dashboard will appear, of which you will have some uh, widgets in your first screen which we, you can navigate to Enter ID, which was formerly Azure Active Directory, Identity Protection, ID, Identity Governments, etc. Prerequisites wise for the Global Secure Access um, service, you will need a Microsoft Enter ID P1 license, which was formerly Azure Active Directory P1. That is as of now, um, when it does come out of uh, public preview or private preview, uh, the licensing may vary. Microsoft do recommend at this point in time, if you are using Global Secure Access, um, you do acquire the use of Microsoft 365 Enterprise E3, uh, just so you get the full complexity of the service itself. With accessing the, the Global Secure Access pane, uh, an error may appear when you do click onto one of the services. Uh, please make sure you have the, the associated roles, either Global Administrator or Global Secure Access Administrator assigned to your account you're using to administer the policies. What we'll be looking at today is implementing um, global secure um, access uh, policy for Microsoft Internet Access. Okay, So we'll be looking at enabling traffic forwarding, installing the global uh, secure access client, enabling universal tenant, tenant settings, and enabling enhanced signaling alongside um, uh, traffic logs. So first things first, when you access entry.microsoft.com, You've got your, your pane on the left hand side, identity, identity protection, identity governance, ver verifiable credentials, permission management for your role based access control, and then your global secure access um, in brackets preview. Please bear in mind that preview uh, services are not fully um, compatible as well as supported okay, in terms of Microsoft. Um, so any service level agreements you may have with um, Microsoft that, that yourself or through a uh, indirect provider um, may not be valid in this use case. So what we need to do is access global secure access. Okay, Down the left hand side, um, under connect, you have an option for traffic forwarding. First things first, we need to enable traffic forwarding okay, as a unified profile. 
you have two options for profile. You have a uh, Microsoft 365 profile, which is your internet access profile, and you have the private access profile for all your private line of business apps you may have deployed. Um, this is basically replacement of application proxy within uh, Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Entry ID. Uh, the Microsoft 365 um, internet access profile is more of a, uh, a public um, forwarding uh, network, like a content delivery network, um, in which you can amend your, your where your traffic directs to from source to destination. Okay. When you do access traffic forwarding, uh, in this in this case scenario, we're going to um, enable internet access. So we come into traffic forwarding, we select the tip box for enable um, traffic forwarding from here. You can see when it was last modified and the uh, date and time. This go apply to all Microsoft 365 traffic for all our um, SaaS applications, so software as a, um, as a solution applications. What we can do, we can select uh, Microsoft 365 traffic policies, uh, free policies associated to this one traffic profile. If we select view, at the moment the policy targets, targets three different services. We've got Exchange Online for our email, we've got SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business for our uh, data um, storage or res residency and Microsoft 365 Common and Office Online for your Microsoft 365 apps. So if we expand each scope, you can see the um, FQDN, so the fully qualified domain name, as well as the URL associated to that and the ports um, that they are communi communicating off of. Um, it's also um, sub segmented into category and protocol from TCP to UDP. Uh, you do have an option to disable each uh, traf traffic forwarding um, policy, okay, just by selecting the tick box um, at the top here. Um, and with that, you can see the associated routes. The action pane uh, differs from uh, forward and bypass. Uh, please bear in mind if you do have a conditional access policy in place, uh, the bypass does take precedence and uh, it will be forwarded to the local host rather than the online host. Once you've customized all your settings in here, I, pl I, I do recommend you refer to the Microsoft documentation in terms of customization. This is just a high level view on, on how to configure it. You come out of here, okay, and you can see uh, if there's any uh, link additional access policies as well. If you are um, incorporating maybe compliant devices into your organization and with that you want to enable traffic, traffic forwarding on those compliant devices, you can do so through a conditional access policy. Once again, conditional access policies do require the use of ID, um, Entra ID P1 or P2 if you're using the um, identity protection uh, user risk and silent risk policies. And then you have an option for assignment, either all, all client devices or um, remote networks. If At this point in time, if I select all assignments, it won't give me an option because I haven't onboarded any remote networks or branch connections to any other office locations. So once we've enabled the traffic forwarding, that's kind of uh, step one in terms of um, enabling global secure access for our clients. Second, second, second step is to um, install and configure the Global Secure Access client uh, in this in this scenario for for a Windows machine, uh, a Windows 10 machine. So what we do down the left hand side, we scroll to devices and we click clients. And as you can see, you can see remote network as well. We can configure our remote networks for both an IPv4 uh, range and IPv6 um, subnet range. Uh, in this in instance, we're going to click clients. And uh, what you would do in, in terms of installing the uh, client itself, you'd log on to the, the client's machine, okay, if you're doing it the local method. Um, and with that, you would log in with the appropriate credentials uh, with the Global Secure Access Administrator or Global Admin Access, and you access the, the client web page and you download the client from a 64 bit uh, perspective. With that, it will ask you for your Azure Active Directory credentials associated with the uh, device in question. Um, and with that, that will install the agent and uh, you'll have the agent appear in the bottom right of your um, operating system, which will give you a connected status um, available or offline. And also you can export logs um, and also conduct um, many diagnostics um, with, with that um, unified agent installed. You can also um, install the uh, client agent through uh, the likes of Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Um, so you can deploy it through the app 
um, within the Microsoft documentation, they do give you the EXE um, installation package of which you can push out to the devices itself through the likes of configuration profile, app deployment profile, um, and scope that to the relevant Microsoft 365 security groups, either from a device perspective or a user account perspective. So at this point in time, we've enabled the traf traffic forwarding profile. We've installed the client on the machine. Okay. Um, and with that, we can see the global secure access client is available and uh, uh, responding. The next stage is to uh, configure the universal tenant settings within the organization. So what we can do, we can scroll up. This is where we have to access enter ID in this particular scenario. And under external IDs, we just want to select overview. Okay. And we want to select uh, cross tenant access settings. And if we scroll down, we'll see tenant restrictions currently in preview. Once again, this is uh, coinciding with the use of global secure access and internet access. Uh, so what we want to do is press edit tenant restrictions. And we can see by default it's on block access. So any external user accounts, um, which are trying to access a SaaS application from a uh, client device which has got the global secure access client uh, installed won't be able to access the, the application itself because we've got the tenant restrictions v2 policy enabled. Um, so what you get here is when you access tenant restrictions it will say enable policy, you select enable policy and you amend the, the applicable uh, properties within here depending on obviously your, your business case. Um, in this instance I'm blocking access for external accounts on any of my uh, SaaS applications where my client is installed locally on the machine. Um, Microsoft will be involved in this at some stage in which you will be able to scope this out to security groups. However, at this particular time it's um, scoped to all external users and groups. You also have the same um, increment for um, enterprise applications as well um, and any uh, user apps you may have in your organization. That's only step one of enabling internet restrictions uh, to uh, enforce it across your global secure access or internet access uh, policies you need to scroll down the left hand side and select uh, session management and you need to under net tenant restrictions enable tag into a fourth tenant restrictions on your network that will then uh, allow the policy to take precedence over the machine and any other external organizational settings you you may have in your organization through the likes of enter id or sharepoint for example So they're kind of the four main criteria in terms of deploying internet access. Um, the next stage is adaptive access. So as you as you may have seen previously, whenever um, or if you have ever seen a uh, known compromise of a user account or a user identity, um, that they may be using a VPN of some sort, of which the IP address does not reside to where the user account is actually accessing the, the services from. Um, so this is basically a replacement of a uh, gen generalized proxy server, okay, adaptive access. It gives you a real good IP reputation in terms of where does the IP actually physically reside in terms of the access broker. Um, so when you do enable NA, enable global secure access signaling additional access um, you can then go into um, enter ID the signing logs okay um, or, or, so if we scroll up and we go to identity and we scroll down to monitoring health and we click sign in logs okay and we click add column You'll see here we now have got uh, IP address uh, seen by resource. Uh, when you do enable that that functionality, you'll be able to get a bit more of a accuracy on, on where the user account is actually accessing the application um, r rather than a uh, geographical IP range, um, if that makes sense. As you can see, there's two filters here now. Okay. Other than that, if you scroll down on the left hand side and we go back to global secure access and we go to login, we've now got a unified approach in terms of our um, audit log uh, for Microsoft 365 online services for SharePoint Teams Exchange. At the moment, SharePoint Online is the only one uh, natively available and it can take up to 72 hours once enabling this for it to feed into your logs under the monitor section. Still best practice is to export this into a diagnostic um, account through a storage account within Microsoft Digital Management Portal. However, um, you will be able to go into Enrich M365 logs at some point and uh, be able to uh, 
do a deep dive into the, the logs you're, you've enabled uh, from an organizational perspective. One more thing, when, uh, one more good thing is when you've enabled the global secure access client on the, the physical machines itself, you can select traffic logs and it will give you a lovely breakdown on who's communicating through which fully qualified domain name, URL, um, source IP, destination uh, IP, and the amount of traffic uh, which is flowing through your organization. And this can be filtered and uh, filter, uh, filtered by column as well to give you a bit more uh, visibility and oversight on who's, who's communicating to what endpoint within your organization. So other than that, I hope that gives you a nice um, high level understanding on how to enable uh, global secure access for internet access. Any further questions, please do let me know. Thank you very much.